This is the Carpigiani LB302RTX. This particular model is an LB True 2 variant. This means that it has a true two-speed beater motor, a low speed and a high speed. This can be used for making gelato, ice cream, sorbet, or granita. The low speed is for making gelato, and the exacto, or high speed mode, gives a lot more overrun and makes the product fluffier and lighter. The regular models of the LB302, without the RTX and without the True2, have single speed beater motors. This machine has a steel door assembly that houses the splash guard and the extraction door. This machine also has an adjustable rack, a water regulating knob, and a water hose. Parts There are two types of beaters that this machine can equip, one for ice cream and one for gelato. The gelato style beater is easily recognizable because of its detachable spring-loaded scraper blades. The ice cream beater is solid and has no removable blades. The machine has an integrated washdown hose that uses domestic water to clean the machine. The water is sprayed into the machine through the feeder and collected through the extraction door into a bucket. The full bucket is then carried to a sink and the water is poured down the drain. Health inspectors will frequently ask where the water goes once it has been run through the machine. Simply explain to them that the water is disposed of through a sink and that this machine does not require a floor drain. The knob on the front of the machine is used to regulate the flow of the water from the washdown hose and is not used to turn the hose on or off. To turn the hose on and off, use the designated button on the display as shown here. Again, do not use the water regulation knob to turn the water flow on and off, as it is not a service knob and it will fail prematurely if used incorrectly. Disassembly, cleaning, reassembly, sanitizing. Now we will start disassembling the machine for cleaning. It is recommended that you prepare a space large enough to easily place each part of the machine. We will start by taking off the door. With both hands, gently lift up on the door. Be careful as the door is quite heavy. After carefully placing the door on the workspace, we will start the disassembly of the door by using the O-ring removal tool to take the O-ring off of the cam lock, then sliding the extraction door assembly off. Now you can flip the faceplate of the extraction door over and remove its O-ring. Removing the hinge pin from the top of the door will release the splash guard. It is not recommended that you fully disassemble the splash guard, but if it is required that you take off the inner door to the splash guard, do so by gently squeezing on it and lifting it away from the pins. You can now flip over the entire door and take out its large O-ring. Now that the door is fully disassembled, you can start disassembling the beater. Be careful when taking out the beater and use both hands, being sure not to drop the back of the beater onto the wall of the cylinder. Any dents or scrapes on the cylinder wall could cause damage to the scraper blades and further disfigure the cylinder. If it is a gelato style beater, like the one shown here, you will have to take apart each individual spring-loaded scraper blade and thoroughly clean them. On each scraper there are two rubber O-rings that secure the springs onto the blades. These will have to be removed. On the back of the beater there is a beater seal. Remove this and set it aside to be washed as well. When all of the parts have been cleaned and dried, you may reassemble the machine. Start by re-lubing and replacing the beater seal onto the back of the beater. Then reassemble the springs and O-rings onto each of the scrapers, making sure to re-lube each O-ring and reinsert them onto the beater. When reinserting the beater back into the machine, you will have to compress the spring-loaded scraper blades to fit them inside the cylinder wall. Then, simply turn and press until you feel the beater seat into the drive shaft. Now we will begin to reassemble the door. First take the large door seal and place it back into the groove on the back of the door. It is recommended that you wait to lube this O-ring until you have finished reassembling the rest of the door. So flip the door over and prepare the extraction door. Reinsert the extraction door seal and re-lubricate it. Then take the cam lock and reinstall the extraction door onto its mount. All that is left to do for the extraction door is to replace the small rubber O-ring on the bottom of its mount and re-lubricate it. Then you will lift and reinsert the splash guard onto the top of the door and replace the guard's hinge pin. Now you can flip the door and re-lubricate its large rubber O-ring. Finally, you can replace the door onto the face of the machine. We will now sanitize the machine. 
Prepare a bucket of sanitizing solution and take it to the machine. Before pouring the solution into the machine, ensure that all door locks are secure so that the solution does not immediately pour out. Now lift the splash guard and begin pouring the sanitizer into the machine. Now press the cleaning mode and let the machine run for at least two minutes in this sanitizing cycle. It is very important that you do not press the production button while there is sanitizer or any amount of water in the machine. If the machine were to go into a mode that permits refrigerant, then the sanitizer would become icy and could easily cause damage to the cylinder of the machine. Once the two minutes of sanitizing is done, simply pour the sanitizer back into the bucket and take it to a sink for disposal. Production of product. Now that the machine has been properly sanitized, we will show you how to put the machine into production. Prepare the product mix and bring it to the machine. Open the splash guard and pour the mix into the machine. Note that the 302 has a 12-quart cylinder, and a full batch is half of that, meaning that this machine's maximum load is 6 quarts. The minimum batch size is 3 quarts. Now that we have loaded the machine with an appropriate level of mix, we will put the machine into production by pressing the production button. Whenever the machine is finished with the production cycle, carefully withdraw a small portion of product and check its temperature. If you are happy with the temperature of the product, then it is time to extract the product. While the machine is still at the end of the production cycle, press the extraction button and lift up on the extraction door. If you see lines in the product from the rods in front of the extraction door, then that is a good indication that the product is at a good consistency. From an operator point of view, the progression lights above the display also serve as a threshold indicator for the consistency of the product. The product we just made was set to a consistency of 10. If we want a more fluid, less frozen consistency, we will lower this number. To do so, press the red stop button until the first square lights up. Then simply press the down or up button to adjust the setting. If you wait 10 seconds without pressing anything, the product will go back into standby and the setting will be finalized. 